I'm currently working on building a custom ported subwoofer enclosure for a JL Audio 13W7. Now we could leave this box completely plain, but where is the fun in that? We want to add some custom beauty panel work to give this enclosure a more detailed look and add this cool emblem. So how do we do that? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get started. So on our custom subwoofer enclosure here, here is the area that we have to work with. On this particular build, in order to come up with a shape for that area, I started with sketching out some ideas. Ultimately, this is the shape that I ended up deciding on just because it's relatively simple and it will give this enclosure a nice clean look. Now to make this particular shape is relatively easy because this is just some basic geometry. You can see we've got some different circles that are combined together to make the different curved areas of this shape. And then for the straight areas, we just use a straight template. This can all be done with a variety of these different templates on the router table using the shape making process that I've shown in previous videos. For the sake of time, if you wanna learn that full process, check out those other videos. But in this project, what I ended up doing is just using my CNC machine to create these. I do want to add a quick side note here because I think there's a misconception that you know you just throw a piece of wood at the CNC machine and out pops some finished parts and that's not the case. First off I had to actually design these shapes on the computer which does take time. And then even now that we've cut these on the CNC machine there's still some post-processing we need to do. A CNC router will oftentimes leave these tabs like this to hold the pieces in place while it finishes its cut and we're going to need to remove these by hand by first using a razor blade to cut them and then we're going to take them over to the router table and flush trim those little tabs away. All right so let's talk a little bit more detail on these pieces that we're going to use. First of all this outer piece here I'm going to be using this to make a cut into my existing baffle piece. Now if you remember from our build video I didn't actually attach this baffle piece to the enclosure yet and I did that on purpose because I knew that I was going to need to make some additional cuts on the front here. This inside piece here that nests within that outer shape we're going to be adding some chamfers to this and we're going to be ultimately wrapping this with some upholstery materials in a few moments here we're also going to be making a quarter inch backer piece that's going to go behind this half inch piece and that's going to have some detail work on it because that's right I made these on the laser machine I haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet but we're going to be using one of these in this area approximately here and we're going to be adding some details around it Really quick before we start making these modifications, I do want to take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, they have a vehicle selector tool where you can enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle. And for qualifying vehicles, they have this document here called the Master Sheet. The Master Sheet is basically a step-by-step how-to manual for your vehicle for doing things like removing the head unit and swapping out speakers. The Master Sheet is very detailed and shows step-by-step -step pictures. Better yet, they also show us what tools we need so that we can make sure we're good and prepared before we start an install. If you want to learn more about the Master Sheet and get $20 in savings for your next car audio purchase, check out those links down in the video description. Before I stick my template piece onto the baffle here to modify it and copy out that inside hole, I do of course want to make sure that it's positioned perfectly. The template piece here is 15 and a half inches tall and my baffle is 16 inches tall, so I know that I need a quarter inch space on each side. So we've got our cutout now perfectly transferred into the baffle. And this is our inside piece that's going to go on the inside. Now, 
What's super important about when we're doing any sort of design like this where we're using beauty panels, we wanna make sure that we account for the upholstery materials or other finishing techniques that we plan on using on the enclosure. In this case, this piece here is going to be permanently affixed to the enclosure and I'm going to be using a Duratex coating. That Duratex coating looks a little bit something like this. This is an enclosure that we built previously on the channel. So that will be on this outside surface and on this surface here, we're actually going to upholster this ring with a vinyl material. Now, because we know the two different materials that are going to be on this piece and this piece, we need to account for them with the proper sized gap. If we were to make the outside here the exact same shape as the inside, we wouldn't have any clearance for those materials and then this piece wouldn't be able to press fit in. Also, if we made that gap far too large, then this piece wouldn't press fit. It would simply want to fall out, which obviously we want to avoid. So I accounted for this by doing some careful measurements and knowing what I know about the Duratex coating, and I'm going to have about a 16th inch gap all the way around between these two pieces. You probably see I have this weird contraption here. This is the CAF material gap gauge kit. If you guys wanna learn more about how to properly size your gaps, because it is super, super important, definitely check out the full video I did showing that process. Now, the other kind of odd thing you might've noticed here is, you know, my baffle piece and the whole enclosure here, that's all three quarter inch thick material. And this insert ring I made out of half inch material. So you can see that there's a difference of about a quarter of an inch. And I've done this intentionally because I wanna add another piece behind my trim ring here. I'll be making that piece that goes behind out of quarter inch material, so let's get this shape transferred. So notice when I made that quarter inch backer piece, of course I copied it to the outside shape there, but while the two were still attached to each other, I sketched out this inside line on the inside perimeter. And that's important just when it comes to lining up pieces for our next little detail work that we're going to add here. So here's what I'm thinking, and the advantage you guys have is you guys have seen into the future and you already know how this is going to turn out based on the thumbnail for this video but I don't, but I think I have a good idea here. So what I've done is I've already cut these two emblems on the laser and I'm only going to be using one. I'm just deciding if I like this negative image better than the positive image here. In fact, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Do you guys like this light one or the dark colored one? The plan for these is I'm going to be using this circle template in order to cut a pocket down into our quarter inch piece of wood. This quarter inch piece of wood is going to be wrapped in vinyl as well. So when I was designing these, I intentionally saved a little bit of a gap. That way the vinyl can push down into that pocket and go around the outside of this emblem and hold it nice and tight. Now the thing is though, I wanna take this to the next level. I don't want just a pocket. I also wanna add some cool lines that are kind of engraved on the outside here. And what I want these lines to do is come in straight. So one line on top, one line on bottom. It's gonna divide and go around the circle shape here and then meet back up and have the two lines. So in order to do that, I need to make myself a new raw template. And this is very simple geometry, just going to use this circular template here along with a straight template.
Now that I've made this part here, I need to determine where I want this logo to be. We could have it centered, we could have it up here. I think I wanna use the lower kind of rule of thirds here and just kind of have it offset to the bottom like this. I'm gonna line it up roughly here. I'm of course going to measure off of this line to make sure that this line here and this line are completely parallel, but then I'm going to stick this in place using some template tape. Now that I have this positioned exactly where I want it and stuck onto the workpiece there, I'm gonna be using my handheld router along with an offset bushing in order to copy the outside of this profile using a flat V-nose bit. So we'll see that in just a second here. And then on the inside, in order to make a pocket for my emblem, I'm just going to be using a dado bit. And this bit has a bearing on it. So I'm gonna take off that bushing on there and I'm gonna use that bearing to ride around the inside of this cutout hole and pocket out that spot. A quick side note, I wanna make sure that my workpiece isn't moving, so I've used template tape to stick it to my table. So as we assemble this, we really start to get more of a feel for what the finished product is going to look like. I love these added lines here. I think that's a nice subtle detail to go around that logo there. Now I do wanna soften up this hard corner here. So I'm gonna use a round over bit on the inside radius. And I also wanna prepare this for being wrapped with upholstery materials along with this piece. So on the back side of it, I'm going to be cutting a rabbited groove. So here's what the back side looks like with that groove, which will allow for clearance of that vinyl to wrap around to the back side. So I wanted to give you guys a rough idea how this is going to look. So I template taped these into position for the time being, but here it is. What do you guys think? Obviously I still need to attach the top of the enclosure and permanently mount the front baffle here. That's easy enough. I'll just be applying some wood glue, making sure that I get complete uniform surface coverage like always, and then clamping this in position so that it can dry. In the next video, we need to do our finishing techniques. Now I talked about how I'm gonna be doing the Duratex coating in that video, but we're also going to be doing some vinyl wrapping. I've got this nice black vinyl here with a medium grain that's going to be going around this outer trim ring. And then we've got this gray vinyl here, a little bit lighter color. That way we'll be able to see the nice shadow lines from our details that we created here that will be going on this inner piece. Don't forget, I still need to decide though if I like the light colored emblem or the dark colored emblem, they'll be going up against this color. And again, I'd like to get your guys input on that. Should we go with the dark or should we go with the light? If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I have tons of videos on my channel all about how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. Don't forget next time you're doing an install, you can get step-by-step -step directions with a master sheet from our show sponsor, Crutchfield. Learn more and get special savings with an offer for car audio fabrication fans at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.